done a lot of videos on Alzheimer's. I've talked about amyloid placking. I've talked about some falsified research relating to amyloid placking. I've talked about the genetic factor of getting Alzheimer's or putting you at risk by 30 to 50%. If you have a very specific, it's called an APOE4. If you have that mutation, you're 30 to 50% more at risk, right? And I've done all these videos as I find more information, but I stumbled on something that is groundbreaking. It's actually quite amazing and you have to hear about it. The more you understand the true mechanism of a problem, the more a solution will pop out. If you were to take a match and you were in the woods and you would light the match and start the woods on fire, would it help to focus all your energy on putting out that match? The answer is no. You know, as a child, I loved to play with matches. Unfortunately, it got me into trouble. I remember one time when I was uh, really small, probably Actually, this was last year. No, I was eight years old. And a friend and I were um, uh, playing with matches. And I found some matches and um, we went in the back of the field. And uh, I wanted to see what would happen if I lit a match into this empty bird nest that was just sitting there. There's no birds in it. I just want to see what would happen. <sighs> so I light it and fire. And my friend says, put it out. I said, no, let, let it go a little bit longer. Well, Within a matter of seconds, it just starts spreading like crazy. We bolted to uh, the back of the neighborhood to someone's house to get water. And then we turn around and the entire field is on fire. Okay. And so I had to run home and tell my father that I uh, lit the field on fire. And as he looked across, you can see the neighborhood with these flames behind the entire neighborhood that's spreading to the next neighborhood. And you can imagine how much trouble I got into and how I felt, but just my luck, it started raining. <laughs> I just, I seemed to luck out. It started raining and it put the fire out, but that was a scare. I don't know why I told you the story, but it does relate to the match forest concept. Well, that's what research has been doing the last 20 years, focusing on the match, okay? With very, very little results, if any, in fact, sometimes the treatment for Alzheimer's is worse. It can actually progress the condition. And so most of the research has been focusing on this theory that this amyloid placking is this metabolic junk that shouldn't be there. It has no purpose. We should just target it and get rid of it. Well, it is true that there's amyloid placking involved in Alzheimer's, right? But amyloid placking would be equivalent to that match that starts to fire. Trying to wipe out the amyloid placking uh, is going to be a waste of your time. The gene that makes this amyloid placking, which is kind of this fibrous tissue in the brain that ends up destroying the neurons in the brain, has been around for a very, very long time, like 400 million years, because this gene is also in other species. So why has it been unchanged in the genetics for this long? Unless there was a very important purpose of this placking. Well, incidentally, two researchers, which I'm going to put down below, stumbled on something that is just uh, quite amazing. They found out that this beta placking is a very potent antimicrobial peptide, a hundred times more potent than penicillin. Well, let me first give you some background. Uh, there's two parts of the immune system. You have the innate immune system that you're born with. It's the ancient first line of defense immune system, okay, part of your army. And then you acquire this other immune system. It's called the acquired immune system. And uh, that's when you have all the antibodies and the T cells and the B cells and all these other things. And that usually is delayed. It takes time for your body to develop that. Okay. But in the brain, there is only the innate immune system. We don't have this other immune system in the brain because it might, maybe because it's just too powerful. It can create a lot of collateral damage and the brain is very sensitive. So this is what they found. They found that this amyloid placking is really an innate immune system reaction to a microbe that seeds or triggers this reaction. And so there's always this kind of this cascade between amyloid placking and this other thing called neurofibrillary tangles, okay? So that's a mouthful. That basically, if you look at that like fishing line, the placking and these tangles work together to entrap and contain pathogens. And so when they grab these microbes, right? Let's say virus, 
they start to release certain chemicals. And one is bleach. Yeah, bleach. And so that just kills the microbe. And then because we have this reaction, okay, we get inflammation in the nerves. It's called neuroinflammation. And so now we have all this collateral damage that's occurring. Okay. And then we basically, it's, it's all reacting to dead nerve cells. Okay. So we have this whole cascade uh, thing that's happening. Alzheimer's is an innate immune reaction to an infection. Now, usually that infection is not necessarily a full-blown infection. It's usually a subclinical infection that tends to brew in the oven. This is why placking usually develops over 20 years. And by the time you have the first symptom, you're at the peak of placking, okay? And then it kind of goes down from there. And so the question is like, what seeds this whole thing? What is the triggers? Well, there are several really key pathogens that are associated with Alzheimer's. You have the herpes simplex one virus, okay? That's been known to trigger Alzheimer's. You also have spirochetes in Lyme disease. You have something else called climatophilia pneumonia, which is a microbe involved in pneumonia. And there's several others. And as far as someone having this gene susceptibility to Alzheimer's, that's that APOE4, which has a risk between 30 and 50% of getting Alzheimer's. Apparently, if you have that gene, you're more susceptible to allowing the herpes virus to cross the blood-brain barrier into the brain, which explains a lot. And so then this got me thinking, isn't there a microbiome in the brain? And it, apparently there's been this long-standing thought that, no, it's all sterile. Just like the blood was sterile until they found out, no, it's filled with microbes. Well, the brain does have a microbiome. That's right. And it's there probably to help protect you Okay. And there's a huge relationship between Alzheimer's and an altered microbiome in your gut, but people don't talk about the brain. And there's just not a lot of research with this microbiome. What can we do about it? Right? Well, <laughs> the most important thing is to do whatever you can to prevent it. There's some other things that are involved in this as well. Okay. Having a strong immune system, having a strong diversified microbiome, and also doing whatever you can to fix insulin resistance, which is also makes you very, very susceptible. I mean, over 50% of the population has insulin resistance. And that alone adds to the fire, the inflammation in the brain. Not being on the ketogenic diet, being on too many carbs adds more inflammation to the brain. You want to run your body on ketones. That bypasses the whole thing. And so I think if you get it in time, you can turn things around really nice. Once you have it, it's just more difficult. I think you can improve it. It all depends on how much damage that's there. And the other thing is, if you have this genetic weakness, this APOE4, you should definitely not be drinking alcohol, being exposed to smoking. Okay. You should be exercising, which will help the genes. You should be doing keto. You should be eating extremely healthy things with antioxidants. So some other things to think about, since 95% of the population has herpes simplex one, okay, is to keep that darn virus in remission as much as you can, right? Do what you can to keep your body healthy. Um, because I've noticed people that get head injuries and go through major losses and stresses and then develop Alzheimer's, right? I think it kind of just activates what's already there. The herpes uh, virus that kind of comes out of remission and then just makes things worse. So we have some key factors to look at. We have the epigenetic things you can do right now. Okay. And I have a lot of data on this, getting enough sleep, the exercise, keeping your stress low, eating extremely healthy, avoiding chemicals that can trigger this. If you keep your stress really low and keep your resistance high with your immune system, you can keep these viruses in remission. I think that's really the key, but there's also one more thing. If you also practice fasting, anyone who has Alzheimer's must be doing intermittent fasting, one meal a day, not two meals, but one meal a day. Why? Because you need the, a good amount of fasting to put your body into an autophagy situation. Autophagy is where your body is cleaning house. It's cleaning up old dead proteins. It's also strengthening your immune system. It's also bringing your inflammation down in your brain. It's also going to help 
increase your resistance to pathogens. And on that note, I have a great video on epigenetics right here. Check it out.